All right, hi everybody, this is Wesley from Creative Energy. Today I'm gonna to talk about some more water chemistry. I've already got a video explaining how to test the chemistry using these different test strips. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, try to check out that video, I'll, I'll link it down below. Uh, but today we're gonna to be talking about the actual chemistry uh, itself. So I wanna talk about what we got here on our five-way test strip. So starting off, the first line we've got bromine and then chlorine. Uh, now these are your sanitizers. You're gonna be using one or the other, not both. If you're going to try to switch from chlorine to bromine or, or, or vice versa, you're gonna to wanna to drain and refill in between uh, the different chemicals. So we don't mix chlorine and bromine. Here we typically use chlorine. Generally, everybody uses chlorine. We have a lot of salt systems. That's a chlorine system. So I'm mainly gonna be talking about chlorine here today. Now chlorine, we wanna to try to keep between three and five parts per million. That's what it shows here on our test strip in the okay range. Um, and that could be done through a couple different ways, either through your chlorine generator system, either by shocking the spa manually, by adding uh, some granular chlorine or liquid chlorine. Uh, we don't recommend the tablet feeders, but some people do decide to go that way. Um, I'll get more into chlorine a, a little bit later, but here we've got the alkalinity and the pH. These two are very strongly connected. Uh, I wanna talk about uh, the pH first. The, the pH measures how acidic or basic the water is. If the pH is at seven or lower, your water can be acidic and that's gonna slowly uh, cause damage to your plumbing and equipment and reduce the lifespan of your spa. So we always wanna keep our pH at least at that 7.2 where it shows here on the chart, um, 7.2 to 7.8. Now, if you start getting your pH level too high, let's say 8.0 or higher, uh, one thing is your chlorine starts to get weaker, so it's not gonna keep your spa as clean. It's not gonna look great if your pH is real high. You may also get some scale buildup or um, more of the water line, right, right along where your water line is. Um, you'll get that kind of, they call it a scum line sometimes uh, from a high pH. So we wanna keep that pH balanced so that our chlorine can work effectively and also that we're not causing damage to the spa. Now the alkalinity has a really strong impact on that. Here on our test strip, it shows we want between 40 and 120. I really prefer at least 80. So I would suggest being at 80 to 120 for your alkalinity. Now what the alkalinity really does, um, think of it this way as like the shocks on a car if you've got no shocks or real bad shocks on your car it's going to be really bumpy and think of that bumpiness as your ph if you have no alkalinity and you add a chemical like let's just say chlorine liquid chlorine has a high ph most dry chlorines has a low ph normally it's not going to change your ph very much when you add those kind of things but if you have no alkalinity Instead of just a little bump to your pH, you're gonna get a big bump to your pH. So if you don't have your alkalinity properly balanced, about 80 or 120, your pH is gonna be more wild. It's gonna be all over the place. So I really recommend um, keeping your alkalinity high. And the best way to do that is to balance your alkalinity uh, when you fill the spa, but also periodically when you need to. And to try to balance the alkalinity be before you even try to balance your pH. Now, that can be difficult because the alkalinity and pH chemicals, here they are, um, are kind of a combined chemical. You'll see pH alkalinity up, pH alkalinity down. So uh, occasionally, you might get into a situation where your pH is already high, but your alkalinity is low. Now that can be tough to deal with because if you lower your pH using the pH and alkalinity down, then you're bringing your alkalinity down. So we always want to balance the alkalinity first. And if your pH is already high and we're bringing our alkalinity up, you want to kind of overshoot it. So follow the directions to tell you how much to add for how much you need to increase. But instead of trying to bring your alkalinity to 120, 
Um, try to bring it up to 140 or 160. That way you can bring your pH back down afterwards and still have your alkalinity in a good spot. Uh, the next thing on our test strip is the hardness. Now, the calcium hardness measures um, how much calcium is in the water. Um, if you have a salt system, then you're gonna want lower calcium levels. You want 25 to 75. Um, if you need to lower your calcium levels, uh, you cannot do it through a chemical, but there's a product called the Vanishing Act. It's included with the salt systems. It looks like a pillow that you put in the spa, and that little pillow basically is like a sponge, and it absorbs the calcium, and then uh, after 24 hours, that, can, that thing gets tossed, because once it's soaked up the calcium, uh, it doesn't have any more that it can take out. Uh, generally here in the Bay Area, we have pretty soft water. A lot of people don't need to adjust their calcium levels at all um, unless they have a salt system, then, then they may or may not need that calcium reducer. Now, if that's the case, you're gonna do that every time. Okay, the next chemical thing on here is the salt. We've got our own salt test strips. I, I showed you that in our other video, how to exactly to use that. It's not the same. You wait 20 seconds. That's the important part here. 20 seconds after you dip this strip to get your reading. Okay. Or you will either read too low or too wrong. Make sure you get it right at 20 seconds. Now the salt is really only something we're looking at in the salt systems. You want it between 1500 to 2000. Um, if your salt is too low, add a cup and test that thing out in about an hour with after you're at it. Um, run your jets when you add your salt or really any chemicals. Uh, run the jets or a clean cycle. Uh, but if your salt is too low on this test strip after waiting 20 seconds, exactly 20 seconds, you may wanna add a cup and then wait a little while to retest it. If your salt is too high, the only way to bring the salt levels down, unfortunately, is to do a partial drain and refill. So if your salt levels are real excessive, you know, pool guy came over and dumped a bunch of salt in or, or who knows how it all got in there and you need to take some out, you either need to drain the entire tub and start over fresh or figure out exactly how much you need to drain uh, let's say 50%. Sometimes I'll take some of my spa water and dilute it with tap water to figure out if I, if I diluted half of it, where my salt level would be. That, that kind of helps me figure out if I ever need to do any kind of draining uh, for salt levels. Uh, the next one up here, this is something again for the salt systems. Although really this is uh, valid information on every spa, but on the salt system specifically, we're really interested in the phosphate levels. Now, the phosphates, the easiest way to explain that is phosphates are kind of like food for your algae. So if you have a lot of phosphates in your water, your, um, your chlorine is gonna get used up a lot faster. Now, if you're adding your chlorine by hand, let's say every time you get out or once a week, you give it a big shock, um, it might not be a big deal. But for a chlorine generator that is limited on exactly how much chlorine it's making and, and it's it's really metered precisely. It really helps to remove the phosphates from the water uh, so that these systems can keep our spa really nice and clean with very little effort. Um, so this is a good test to do on your spa, especially if you're having problems with a lot of chlorine usage. It seems like you're just using a ton of chlorine. Check your phosphates. You may have a lot of those in there and reducing those phosphates um, may help you out. There is a chemical we add to the water called phosphate remover. Uh, that removes the phosphates. It will cloud up your water when you add it. Uh, so just be aware of that. Clean your filters and then add the phosphate remover and then you're going to end up cleaning those filters again after a day or two. Um, and that'll get the phosphates out of the water. All right, one of the other chemicals I want to talk about here uh, in the water is called cyanuric acid. Uh, now, this is a more advanced uh, chemical to even really discuss with hot tub chemistry. This is something that more people are concerned about with swimming pools, but it's definitely something that's important in hot tubs as well. Um, unfortunately, the cyanuric acid test is not something that you're going to have um, on hand, this is a more advanced kit for professionals. 
Um, it can be done at some of our retail locations. You may want to check with them beforehand to make sure that they can do that. But um, not going to go over how to test cyanuric acid, but more so what it is. And so cyanuric acid is often called something called chlorine stabilizer. So cyanuric acid will protect chlorine from evaporating when it's exposed to the sun. That's the main function of cyanuric acid. It's supposed to slow your chlorine's evaporation to the sun. Now, on hot tubs that are covered all the time, this is really not a very important thing. Um, they don't get that much exposure to the sunlight. This is why I was saying that mostly swimming pools are concerned about this because they're open and uncovered to the sun um, the majority, if not all day in some cases. So why is it a bad thing and why are we even talking about it? So when cyanuric acid levels build up, it starts to weaken your chlorine. Your chlorine gets weaker and weaker and eventually it has a hard time killing off things like bacteria and viruses and anything else in the water. So it's very important for us to keep cyanuric acid levels down and it might be something that we're not even aware of in our spa. Um, so if you think you have an issue with cyanuric acid, let's say you haven't drained your spa in a very long time, you have consistent chlorine levels, like you're getting good readings of chlorine, but it just doesn't seem to be cleaning up your spa. Your spa still doesn't look great even though you get a chlorine reading every time you test it. That could be because of excessive cyanuric acid buildup. And it may just be time to drain and refill the spa because unfortunately that is the only way to get rid of the cyanuric acid in the water um, unless you have extremely expensive uh, filtration equipment. Um, but aside from specialized filtration equipment, draining and refilling is the only way to get rid of the cyanuric acid. So how does the cyanuric acid get in our water at all? Um, the cyanuric acid can get in your water from adding chlorine products, specifically dry chlorine. Like Enhanced Shock, this is one of them. Uh, there's chlorine concentrates, chlorine tablets, um, dichlor, trichlor, basically any type of chlorine that you're going to find for a hot tub other than a liquid form chlorine is going to have cyanuric acid in it. Um, with the one exception being calcium hypochlorite, but we don't want to use calcium hypochlorite in our spas. Um, it's very, very strong. It doesn't dissolve well enough. It may sit on the bottom uh, as well as it adds calcium to the water, which over a long term, we don't want to add that either. So um, for our salt water spas, we are now including liquid chlorine in that package because it does not contain that cyanuric acid. Um, and it's just better for the long-term health of your spa to try to reduce that as much as possible. Um, one way could be by using the salt system. That, that's one way to greatly reduce how much cyanuric acid you're using. Um, liquid chlorine is another way to do that, but that can be difficult to maintain on a regular basis. You can also use chlorine-free shocks like MPS. You can use an MPS shock. That does not have cyanuric acid in it either. Um, so if you're using dry chlorine, try to avoid using that as your only form of shock. This is sodium dichlor. If you look down here on the active ingredients, it says sodium dichlor. So any product you see that says sodium dichlor like that is going to have cyanuric acid. Okay. Um, so try to, try to keep that low. That's the, because the liquid chlorine and the salt system doesn't use any cyanuric acid. That's the main reason why these salt system spas, we say only need to be drained once a year. Um, whereas every other spa ideally should be drained four times a year. Now, most people don't do it that often. Um, but if you're using the spa heavily, it does need to be done that often because of how quickly you build up on cyanuric acid um, and how hard it is to maintain the spa once you've got a lot of that in there. All right, uh, the next topic I want to talk about is metals. Sometimes you may have metals in your water like copper or iron. Now that's typically only going to be with uh, like possibly a well water system if you're on well water, although um, it is possible for it to come from your local supply. Um, ideally, there's not going to be any metals in your water, but if for some reason you suspect you have metals in your water, um, we do recommend using 
this fresh water clean screen pre-filter. So basically you will attach this to the end of your garden hose. You'll take off this cap and attach it to your garden hose. And then the other end will fill up your spa. So this will give you nice, clean, filtered water. It will take out any metals if they're in there and any other uh, impurities in the water. So this is a great thing. If you think there's anything, you know, possibly questionable about your tap water, you know, if you like to filter your water before you drink it, you may want to filter your water before you soak in it. Okay, and now I want to talk about chlorine. I could talk all day about chlorine, so I'm going to try to keep this quick. Uh, there's a lot of kind of different chlorine products out there and I want to talk about some of them and I want to kind of talk about this whole uh, shock business. We see a lot of products with the word shock in it. Some might say shock, some may not, but what shocking is, is when you give a real heavy dose of chlorine or some other type of sanitizer and oxidizer. Um, shocking is just a term for a heavy dose of something. So I can take this enhanced shock and add a little bit and bring my chlorine up just a little bit and I wouldn't say that I'm shocking my tub, I'm just adding some chlorine. Um, and I could take this liquid chlorine here and dump in a cup of it right into the spa, like a measuring cup, I take one cup of this liquid chlorine and that will be shocking the spa, okay? So it doesn't have to be a product with the word shock in it to be shock even though this does say shock treatment. Uh, this one here, chlorine concentrate. You think, is, is shock stronger than a concentrate? Is, do I want that? It, it's, it can be very confusing, I know. Um, so this chlorine concentrate, the, way they, the reason why this is called chlorine concentrate is this is, you see here, sodium dichlor, and then I'm not gonna pronounce the rest of that, good luck, 99%. Um, so this is just as much chlorine as they can get into this bottle. This is like pure chlorine here. Okay. Um, and then we've got this one here, enhanced shock. Now you'll see this is the same thing here. The sodium dichlor tritazone, I, I, you know, no one's going to say that part. Um, but it is 58%. So you may go, hey, wait. This stuff's stronger, that's 99%, and that's 58%. Why would I buy Enhanced Shock over the chlorine concentrate when this one's 99% and this one is only 58? Now, this is the other ingredients that are on here. Other ingredients, it doesn't really say what that is, but on the Enhanced Shock, the other ingredients is gonna be this stuff here, MPS. So this is a chlorine-free oxidizer. So uh, monopersulfate, that's what the MPS stands for. Monopersulfate, you can kind of see that at the end of this whole potassium name, uh, peroxymonosulfate. Um, MPS is a chlorine-free oxidizer. Uh, it's, it can't be used completely in place of chlorine. You're still gonna wanna use some chlorine alongside it, but uh, it's a good shock for your spa. If you don't want to add a ton of chlorine, you can use these two products here together uh, just fine. The chlorine granulars for when you want more chlorine and the MPS for when you want to oxidize. Now we talked about cyanuric acid. Cyanuric acid is not in this. There's no cyanuric acid in the MPS. The cyanuric acid is going to be in the dichlor. Okay? So this product, the granular uh, concentrate, this is going to have more cyanuric acid than this enhanced shock because again, this is basically just a combination of the, the concentrate and the MPS. So you mix the two of these and you end up with enhanced shock, which ends up having less cyanuric acid. So if you're only gonna have one product for keeping your spa clean, for your sanitizer. You don't want granulars and ox you don't want all the different products, you just want one. I would go with Enhanced Shock. You know, you get the best of both, both worlds here. A lot of people will use this Enhanced Shock just by adding a teaspoon per person every time you get out. 
Okay, that's kind of a, a rule of thumb, but it depends on how long you're in, how clean you are before you get in, a lot of different things. That's just kind of a general uh, way to go from there. So if you, if you don't know what to do, you can try that out, see how that works for you. Uh, but then again, everybody does everything a little bit differently. Do what works for you, I normally recommend. If you've been doing something for a long time that works, keep doing that, okay? Now, the last thing we have here is the liquid chlorine. Now, liquid chlorine, I'm gonna zoom in here, you'll see. Liquid chlorine is sodium hypochlorite, 10%. So it seems, it sounds a lot weaker than the other stuff. And technically uh, it is, but it comes in a much bigger jug. So you just end up using more of it. It's not more expensive. If anything, liquid chlorine may be a little cheaper, but it may not be fun to handle because it is a liquid. You don't want to spill it. Um, you don't want to get it on your hands. Um, but for the salt systems, this is the ideal way to go is with the chlorine liquid because it's it works really fast. It's really strong. Um, but it also dissipates really fast because it doesn't have cyanuric acid. It doesn't have the chlorine stabilizer. But with a salt system, you're going to be generating liquid chlorine all the time. Okay? So for a salt system, we always want to use this liquid chlorine. It works great. We don't build up on cyanuric acid. Our water stays crisp and clean all year that we have that same water in the spa. Okay? Um, if you've got more questions on this stuff, um, you can call one of our showrooms or our service department. Uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about some chlorine principles, uh, mainly the different types of chlorine. Now you're going to see on your chlorine test strips, it says free chlorine, not just total chlorine or combined chlorine. Cause those are some different terms here. There's free chlorine, which is the active and available chlorine that's that's the stuff we want we want free chlorine that is good now combined chlorine that's a different type of chlorine combined chlorine is when your free chlorine does work it combines with the particles and it turns into a combined chlorine now that is the type of chlorine that actually creates that bad chlorine odor not free chlorine the combined chlorine makes the chlorine smell. It's what makes your eyes burn in the water. Um, that's why you get that chlorine smell associated with the public pools, because they got a lot of usage. They got a lot of combined chlorine. That chlorine's doing a lot of work. Now in your own spa, you're hopefully not gonna build up on a lot of combined chlorine. Um, combined chlorine actually, um, works its way out on its own when your spa is chlorinated properly. When you have enough free chlorine, it takes that combined chlorine, breaks it down again, and it becomes free chlorine again. Um, it does that whenever you have 10 times the amount of free chlorine as combined chlorine. So it's one of those things that if it never starts building up, you never get a lot of combined chlorine as long as you have some in your water, it never builds up. But if you're neglecting your spa and you're, you're not adding enough chlorine and that chlorine kind of gets eaten up as soon as you add it and then there's no more chlorine in there, you use it again, you add some more chlorine. So you just keep building up on combined chlorine. You never have enough chlorine to oxidize that stuff um, back into free chlorine. You end up where your, um, your water just isn't good. It it's, it's, doesn't smell right. It might not look right, it might be foaming. So if you think you have uh, combined chlorine, you could try to do some advanced water testing. It's not something that's gonna be on your typical test strip, unfortunately. But if you think you have combined chlorine, I recommend a heavy shock on the spa. Okay, now a heavy shock is targeting about 20 parts per million, uh, but ideally we don't wanna go any higher than that. 20 parts per million is about as high as we wanna shock our spas. Um, you don't want to use your spa when it is that high on chlorine. But when we have problems with the water, sometimes that's what we need to do. We need, we need to chlorinate it so much that we don't want to use it at the same time. Okay. But that's only temporary. It only lasts a day or two, maybe, maybe less even. Um, the other principle chlorine we want to talk about here is called chlorine demand. Now, 
chlorine demand would be if you go out to your hot tub, you test it, and oh, there's no chlorine. You got a white pad on the end of that test strip. There's there's no no chlorine at all. You you add some chlorine, blah blah blah. You go about your day. The next day you come out, you test your chlorine levels again, and there's still no chlorine. And you're going, what the heck? I'm adding chlorine every single day, and my chlorine levels are not improving. What what's going on? That could mean that you have a high chlorine demand. So look at your spa water. Is your spa water nice and clean and, and crisp? Uh, well, then you may not have a very heavy chlorine demand. It might be pretty easy to break out of it. But if you look at your water, it's a little bit cloudy. Maybe it's a little bit tinted green. Um, or let's say you add some chlorine and all of a sudden, you, right after you add it, the water starts foaming a lot and it smells really bad. And you're thinking, oh man, something's wrong. Um, that's actually the the right thing when you add when you add a lot of chlorine and you have a chlorine demand you're gonna get a really bad chlorine smell initially right after you add that stuff um, you're gonna have your water foam because that's that's a chlorine doing its work as it's breaking things down it can turn into foam um, so that's to be expected ideally we want to try to avoid getting to this chlorine demand state but um, you know it, it can happen it's it's not a big deal it's it's easy enough to fix um, what it what it requires is for us to shock the spa which means a heavy dose of chlorine whichever form that you're using um if you've got multiple products let's say you're using mps and granulars the concentrate you're using these two um you can use some of each to try to help get out of that chlorine demand but ideally what we want to be able to do is give our hot tub a big strong dose of chlorine and then come back out to it the next day, 24, 12 to 24 hours later, you come out, test your water again, and you have a chlorine reading. If you test it 12 hours, 24 hours later, there's no chlorine in the spa again, that means you didn't use enough chlorine the first time to completely break that demand. Okay, so um, what I normally recommend, especially if you think that chlorine's demand is really, really bad, test your water with the test strip, um, after adding your first dose of chlorine, test it like 10 minutes later. So hit the clean cycle, add a, you know, if you're using liquid chlorine, um, this stuff here, this is 10%. You may have liquid chlorine that's a different percentage. Uh, but if you're adding this type of 10% liquid chlorine, a shock in most spas is going to be about a cup. If it's really bad, you may add two cups. Um, the most extreme I've really seen is three cups and boy, that did the trick. Um... So this stuff is strong, be careful. Don't just go dumping it in the spa. Um, but so add your first cup of the liquid chlorine if that's what you're doing, and then test your water 10 minutes later. So use that clean cycle on your spa, use the clean option to run your jets for 10 minutes, add the liquid chlorine or your enhanced shock, chlorine granulars, whatever it is that you're using to sanitize the spa, add a nice good dose of that, and then check it after the clean cycle. After 10 minutes, check it. If you have a reading, hold off and check it again um, in another hour, okay? If you have no reading, even after that chlorine you added 10 minutes later, add another dose about the same as what you did. So liquid chlorine, you could add another cup. Enhanced shock, you may end up using this little cap as your measurement, okay? A lot of people with this enhanced shock will basically fill this cap and use that as your shock, okay? A cap of that and 10 minutes later, if you still got no chlorine, do another one, okay? So you basically keep that up until you get a chlorine reading. Once you do have a chlorine reading after, you know, 10 minutes or an hour, make sure you have a chlorine reading 24 hours later. Once you get to that point where you can wait 24 hours and you have a chlorine reading and your water looks better, then you know you've broken your chlorine demand. Now. If you have a bunch of chlorine in your water after this process, but your water is just not clearing up, it's still really just bad, then I would assume you may have a problem with some cyanuric acid, unless you've only been using liquid chlorine. If you've been using any dry chlorine, I would assume you may have a cyanuric acid issue and you may want to drain and refill the spa if uh, even with a lot of chlorine, your water's not clearing up, okay? Um... I think that just about covers all the topics I want to talk about with this stuff. Uh, I know there's a lot to learn here and there's still so much more water chemistry 
can be super confusing. Everybody's situation is a little bit different. You just kind of need to find out what's going to work the best for you. Okay. Um, if you're still having difficulties with this, you can contact us at creativeenergy.com. Uh, uh, my name is Wesley. You can ask for me if you're really getting into some of the water chemistry. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something. And uh, feel free to leave questions down below in the video in the comments, and I'll try to get back to them as well. Okay?